This is a brief video on personality disorders listed by cluster, clusters A, B, and C. Most of the information here is available on Wikipedia at the site listed up there, and also grabbed from other sources and aggregated to come up with a good summary of personality disorders. Let's start with cluster A, also called the weird cluster, uh, where most of these disorders have odd and eccentric characteristics. We're going to start with paranoid personality disorder. A person with paranoid personality disorder has irrational suspicion and mistrust of others. They often interpret the, event, the motivations of others as malevolent, often accusatory without evidence, and they blame their problems on others. They are path pathologically jealous in relationships. So these are people that just do not trust other people, um, and their uh, relationships obviously suffer because of their paranoid personality disorder. Now, in this disorder, as with all the others, um, the patients have these traits to the point that it impairs, it impairs their daily functioning. It uh, prevents them from either making relationships or progressing in their jobs or contributing to society or being a good family member in some way. And that's part of what makes it a personality disorder. It has to have impairment on their lives. Next in cluster A is the schizoid personality disorder. Schizoids prefer to be alone. One easy way to remember this is that schizoids avoid. They lack interest and they are detached from social relationships. They are apathetic and they have restricted emotional expressions. Uh, one thing to differentiate schizoid from avoidant that we're gonna talk about later is that schizoid has voluntary social withdrawal. They voluntarily want to avoid other people. They're okay with being isolated, reclusive, quiet, and unsociable. Next, last one in cluster A is schizotypal. Schizotypal is a person who has odd, eccentric thoughts and behaviors. They sometimes experience magical thinking, such as talking about spirits or talking about omens or talking about fortunes and stuff like that. Hyper-religiosity and grandiosity sometimes as well. They sometimes have a peculiar appearance in the way they look or dress or big fancy hats with feathers, things like that, kind of magical appearances. Um, they can have a pattern of extreme discomfort when interacting socially, and they often have distorted cognitions and perceptions as well. So schizotypal is essentially a weird person. Um, schizoids avoid, and a paranoid person is like the classic uh, paranoid that everybody hates them, or paranoid that um, everybody's out to get them, paranoid that, that, uh, that their husband is cheating on them, or that their wife is cheating on them, and um, always jealous. Next is cluster B. These are the wild disorders. So cluster A was weird. Cluster B is wild. Um, cluster B is also described as dramatic and emotional disorders, and you'll see why in a second. First in cluster B is antisocial personality disorder. This is a person with a disregard for and violation of the rights of others. They completely lack empathy, often having a bloated self-image and impulsive behavior. These people are often criminals. They break laws, they break rules. They, and the tricky part is that they know social cues. They know how to get under someone's skin or they know how to play the system, which can make them very manipulative. Um, but when they're caught, they're um, often caught doing criminal behavior, they are labeled as criminals and oftentimes labeled as sociopaths or psychopaths. So when we hear those words, we think of antisocial personality disorder. Conduct disorder is kind of the equivalent of this in somebody who's less than 18 years old. So a person with conduct disorder often ends up being diagnosed with antisocial personality disorder after 18 years old. Next is borderline personality disorder. This is described by abrupt mood swings, unstable relationships, self-image problems, uh, identity problems, behavior and affect are often um, unstable there too. Um, this can often lead to self-harm and impulsivity, recurrent suicide attempts. Uh, borderline people often experience splitting, which is when you see another person and automatically think they're very good or very bad. Um, and Unfortunately, a lot of patients with borderline personality disorder have a history of abuse in their childhood, oftentimes sexual abuse. There's a specific type of therapy that's prescribed to people with borderline personality disorder. This is called dialectical behavioral therapy, which a lot of times uh, emphasizes patients recognizing their triggers or recognizing what sets them off or what makes them impulsive or what makes them act abruptly. Um, so DBT is important to associate with borderline personality disorder. Next is histrionic 
personality disorder. This is a person with attention seeking behavior and excessive emotions. A person who's provocative, often sexually, flamboyant, extroverted, sexually inappropriate. And uh, because of these behaviors, they cannot form long lasting, meaningful relationships. These people are often superficial. Um, one example in the media that's often attributed to histrionic personality disorder is Marilyn Monroe and her personality. Uh, attention seeking, excessive emotions, provocative, flamboyant, sexually inappropriate, stuff like that. That's histrionic personality disorder. Lastly, in cluster B is narcissism or narcissistic personality disorder. This is a person who exhibits grandiosity, superiority, inflated ego, an entitled need for admiration, and perceived or real lack of empathy. They often exploit others and they sometimes criticize others, oftentimes out of low self-esteem. These people can be very successful in the business world and um, their ability to exploit others and their inflated ego would help them in that sense. But otherwise, this is a person who's full of themselves. A person who's a narcissist uh, is grandiose, thinks very highly of themselves, um, but a lot of times they have underlying insecurities um, that, that kind of make them act the way they do, kind of make them need uh, that constant admiration. Last cluster is cluster C. This is described as people who are worried. Other characteristics are anxiety and fear. So weird, wild, and worried. Cluster C is worried. First in cluster C is avoidant personality disorder. This is a person who exhibits social inhibition and inadequacy. They have an intense fear of rejection uh, and they're extremely sensitive to negative evaluations, but they desire companionship. So this is one way to differentiate avoidance in which they desire companionship with schizoid in which they are voluntarily socially withdrawn. So schizoids avoid, avoidance avoid because they're afraid of rejection. That's an important distinction to make. Paranoid people uh, mistrust others and are afraid that others are out to get them. Schizoids voluntarily avoid. Avoidant is afraid of rejection. Next is dependent personality disorder. This is a psychological need to be cared for by other people. These people often have very low confidence and they need other people for several things, to take care of them, to make decisions for them, to assume responsibilities for them. And they generally have a fear of being alone. This is a person who oftentimes is in relationships all the time at a young age. And if a relationship ends, they're completely lost and distraught and unable to make decisions on their own. Um, often with underlying very low self-confidence. And lastly is obsessive compulsive personality disorder. This is a person who has rigid conformity to rules, perfectionism, control, inflexibility, and orderliness. A person who has to have everything go according to their plan. Rules, perfectionism, control. Um, this is, uh, it's, it's so bad that it's to the point that they exclude leisurely activities and friendships. A lot of times it's damaging to the things that they enjoy or damaging to their friendships. But the interesting thing is that this is egocentric for these people. Um, obsessive compulsive personality disorder is egocentric because they're okay with the way they are. They're okay with their perfectionism and their inflexibility and their orderliness. On the other hand, obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD, is ego dystonic. Patients do not like the obsessions and the compulsions that they have. In obsessive compulsive personality disorder, they are okay with their perfectionism. They are okay with the control, with the orderliness. These people are in, with OCPD, obsessive compulsive personality disorder, are often successful professionally, but not socially. Um, so that's an, an important distinction to make between obsessive compulsive personality disorder and obsessive compulsive disorder. This one, the personality disorder, OCPD, is ego syntonic. Uh, they, they, they are okay with the way they are. They're just very perfectionist, inflexible, and orderly. This has been a brief video on personality disorders by cluster. We talked about cluster A, B, and C. I hope this was helpful, and thank you for listening.